Yes, sweet. Cool. I wanted to talk about two different things um, that people asked me about. One of them, the first one is regarding what is love? Big question. But the, the post was about we mistake attention for love. So I just wanted to talk about my own experience with that and what it means to me. So after I got out of the relationship with the, with the narcissist, any relationship actually, but after that, I had to be really honest with myself. I'm like, okay, this is what happened. What, what did I do? What part did I play or like whatever? So the, the big question, every time I was overcome with emotion, if I thought about it or thought about whatever, I have to examine it and figure out why, what am I feeling what, and why am I feeling it and what do I need to do about it? And it kept coming back to what the narcissist, it kept coming back to attention. That is what I, I missed. I missed his attention. And he seemingly gave me the attention that I wanted. You know, he gave me, he was there. If I asked for something, he, if, well, if he wanted to, he would help, you know, and that was nice to have help with things, um, emotional or physical around the house or whatever it was. But the main thing was having someone focused on me, you know, having someone that I loved give me attention. And it's pretty simple. You know, I can drag it out and put a bunch more words on it, but it really is that simple. And thinking about even other relationships that I've had with men. And I have to be honest that that's a big part of it. You know, it's simple. I didn't have the love of my dad. I didn't have his attention at all. Very simple. And it's so cliche, but it's fucking true. So if a guy, you know, again, I'm just heterosexual female talking about my experience. Use whatever gender fits for you. But if a guy's giving me attention, you know, he's across the bar, he's kind of cute or wherever. I don't go out, but you know, when I was younger, wherever we were and, and he's looking at me, well, then I felt special, you know, and I'm going to be attracted to that. And the problem was <laughs> I didn't have any other standards. I didn't have any other ideas of what I wanted. It was what was available to me. So they could still treat me like shit as long as later they gave me attention or, you know, I, I will, I, I don't enjoy negative attention. I'm like a narcissist. They'll take whatever attention you give them. But I just, you know, wanted someone I cared about to care about me. That felt, that made me feel love if someone, you know, gave me attention. So that's what I'm saying. It's, it's in our best interest, I think, to have a list of attributes that we do want in a partner that we do respond to even even the the ones that aren't necessarily awesome like that one like attention okay well you can have a list of what I respond to and what I want to respond to or what I want in a partner and be like okay well I'm functioning with that attention thing again do I really like this person not really what what do they have about them that I love and admire or respect and if they don't have anything and it's just, well, oh, it's kind of empty, but it's cool because he calls me or he texts me and, or, you know, comes over. Is that enough? You know, ask yourself uh, that. And again, some of the things that I respond to in people now, I, you know, I know people can fake it, you know, guys can fake it because if you're a narcissist or a manipulative person, those guys and girls, their deal is to scan you to see what it is that you want so that they can pretend to be that so they can take what they want from you. So if they see, oh, well, all I got to do is, you know, give her a little attention, you know, cook her dinner once in a while and, and she gives me what I want, well, then that's, that's all you're going to have. Um, so I, I really appreciate honesty and integrity. Those are like the big things. Like integrity kind of encapsulates everything. Um, it's just basically being real. 
someone who's real. And that's rare. Isn't that weird? <laughs> well, maybe it's just my experience. Maybe it's just my reality tunnel or the place I live or something, something. But there's not a lot of people that I can just sit down with and be like, oh, goddamn, you know, this person, they're on it. Hang on. There's like one fly in here and it comes in here every time I fucking try to record something. Um, so when, when someone is real, it's, it's a big deal to me and I can recognize that, you know, um, I'm kind of a scanner too. I can scan people. It's weird. I guess that's what, I don't know if I ever thought about it till right now, but in this way, but I too can scan people and I know, I know where they're coming from, even if they don't talk to me. Usually it takes, you know, at least a sentence, but I could be like, okay, well, this person has been through this, that, and the other thing. And that might sound weird, but I can, I can do it. I must've trained myself, um, when I was a kid to do that or something. Cause I, I, and it's weird because I'm, I can usually get pretty specific. Like, well, that person was molested. You know, I, I can read from people's, I guess it's meta communication or their demeanor or the way they the way they carry themselves, the way they communicate, the things that I can tell they're afraid of. And I, and I remember doing that very young. How I knew what that was, I don't know, but I was a pretty smart kid. But I could, I could tell, okay, well, something's off about this person regarding this subject. So anyway, which is fine. But if I'm a malevol- malevolent person, I'm going to use that against you. So set some standards, figure out what it is that you do want, and then figure out what you will not tolerate. If he cheats, he's out. I don't care, whatever else, he's out. Or, you know, things like that. Or if he lies, if I can't, one lie, one lie is enough for me. Yeah, so that's a good idea to kind of figure those things out. Um, if you have any other questions about that, let me know, because that's, that's, what I think about that. Like if all you respond to is attention, that's a recipe for disaster because they can, people can definitely manipulate you with that. Um, friends or, or lovers or whoever. Um, the other one, the other question was, the question was regarding how, when you leave someone, if you're in a manipulative relationship or you're in any kind of relationship, for that matter, but you, you know, usually you can communicate with someone who's not being completely manipulative, but if you're in a relationship that is manipulative or toxic for yourself, you have to leave. But the question is, well, how does that help the other person as well? If you, if you set a boundary and leave, how does that help the other person? If you're dealing with a narcissist, And that's the only example that I'm going to give. There are other personality disorders that I think I know about, but I'm not really going to talk on them. So I'll just stick with the narcissist. They're not going to change. It really doesn't matter what the fuck you do. They're going to do what they do. So that's not, that's not part of this. Part of this is if you're in a relationship, let's say with your daughter and she's an alcoholic and you continue to enable them and, and bail them out of jail and this, that, and the other thing. Um, are you really helping them? Every time you bail them out of jail, they're not having to deal with their own consequences of their actions. So they'll keep doing it and they'll keep expecting you to bail them out. And that's just the pattern. So let's say I have a daughter who's an alcoholic and I keep bailing her out of jail. Well, if I set my boundary, I'm like, you know what? This is the last time. This is, this is the la- I'm not doing it again. And she gets arrested again. I, 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 you know, in, in, in effect, walk away by setting that boundary saying, no, you know, I love you. And it's not even about that. It's about the fact that I don't want to go through this anymore. I don't have any money left and I've been doing this for 20 years and it's not changing. So I'm going to set this boundary, um, handle it. you you chose to drink and get arrested or drive drunk or whatever it is. So if I walk away and I take care of myself and I do what I have to do for myself, my daughter may or may not, but hopefully she will deal with her own consequences and see the example that I set of I'm setting boundaries and taking care of myself. So maybe she'll be like, well, that 
I would like to have that kind of life. I want to sit down. I don't want to keep getting in trouble. I don't want to keep wasting my life and my money, my time. I'd rather do what she's doing. I'd rather take care of myself. So what do I need to do that, you know, get into treatment, this, that, or the other. So that's, that's an example. In a romantic relationship, if you're with someone who is functioning with any kind of addiction, if they're codependent, let's just say they're codependent also. So if you're with a guy and he's codependent and the both of you are codependently enmeshed and trying to make each other feel certain things and be a certain way, um, and you decide, you know, things aren't getting any better. I'm doing everything. I love this person. I'm doing everything I can, but do they, I, I still hurt and I don't know what's going on, but I, I know I, I, I hurt and I don't like it and I don't want it to continue. You walk away and again, take care of yourself, do what you got to do. And hopefully they will look at their own behavior and decide how, how they want to function. You know, they'll get real with themselves. That's the hope is you're not leaving for them. You're leaving for yourself because it's something about it is damaging you. Something about it is hurting you. But the hope is, you know, maybe they'll do what they need to do for themselves also. But it's, I don't know. I, I just want to stress how much it is not about that. How much it is not about the other person. You can hope for that, but you can't wait for that. You can't try to make that happen. That's how we get in trouble with, you know, with our codependency. We try to do everything for them because we want them to feel good. We want them to be happy and we want them to be healthy and we want a healthy relationship. But you can't make those decisions for somebody else. That's the thing. I want to talk about enmeshment more. Maybe I'll take some notes and do that. But it's about basically feeling responsible for somebody else's emotions. I, I'm completely guilty of that in relationships. Like, oh, he's upset. What do I need to do to make him feel better? People will count on you. If you get in that habit of, of functioning that way, they'll expect you to. Me, I've functioned with that hoping that they would catch on and start taking care of themselves. And when time keeps going by and it keeps not happening, time went by and it kept happening and I had to make a decision. I'm putting a lot of effort into my own recovery. If you want to call it that, that too, hang on. Let's see if I can, let me take a note. So I remember to get back to that. Um, Oh, fuck, now what was I going to say? Putting a lot of effort into my recovery. Oh, words. I use terminology that's just, that's used, generally used. I, I know what I mean, so I don't get hung up on it. Like, recovery and narcissism and whatever. It's just like, I know what that means. And, and... I can't qualify every, some people are really good with their words. I'm very articulate. I, I'm okay, but I'm not great. I'm not as good as I would like to be, put it that way. So I can't qualify every single fucking word I use to explain to you exactly what I mean. Like hopefully you'll, you'll understand that I'm just speaking generally, usually, unless it's my own experience and I'm telling you what I experienced. But like recovery could mean, you know, I just, when I say that, I mean getting better, getting, having something happen or, you know, having a bad habit, having addiction, having, yeah, we'll just, just, let's just stop. We'll just say that. And so my idea of recovery is recovering from the trauma that I experienced and changing the way I function. That's what I mean by that. So what was my point? Oh, oh, working so hard on my recovery Either you got to meet me on my level and work that hard on your own recovery. If you're a victim of trauma too, and you have lots of issues, you got to, you got to, if you're 
someone that I'm in love with, you have to do the same for yourself. You don't, you don't have to, but if you want to be with me, you do. Because I need to be able to trust you. I need to be able to feel safe with you. And I will not if I know you're still functioning with things that are not true. And if you're still harboring major issues that you're not addressing, you're not admitting, you're not addressing, they're not going to go away. They're going to manifest in your behavior and they're going to manifest in our relationship. So whether you're my friend or my lover, if you're my lover, that you're the most important person outside of my little, you know, my family, myself and my child, you're next in line. And I need to feel safe. Bottom line, I'm a victim of trauma. It's not even trust issues. I can trust you if you're real. I can trust you, you know, if you're trustworthy. But if you have shown me that you're not, if you've shown me that you're not going to address this shit, I can't, I can't be in love with that. I know how hard it is because I've been dealing with it my whole life. Admitting stuff I don't want to admit. Looking at behaviors of mine that aren't healthy or right. Looking at things that people did to me to make me this way. I'll, I'll face that shit. I don't like it, but there's nothing more important to me than reality. There's nothing more important to me than wanting to know what reality is so I can base my life on that and function that way. So if you're not functioning that way, I, I can't trust you. It's, it's simple. I'm trying to say it a million ways, but it is that simple. So how can walking away help? If the person is open to it or whatever, you know, it totally depends on the person. You, if they're open to it, then they'll get better. They'll be like, oh, they'll see the example you set, take boundaries, taking care of yourself. I can't, I can't be with that because it hurts me and I'm not safe. And they can be like, okay, well, fuck. And look at their behavior and be like, I actually can understand why she did that. I totally can understand why she did that. That sucks. I didn't mean to hurt her. I didn't mean to, I didn't mean for her to feel unsafe. I don't ever want to do that again. She doesn't want to talk to me. I understand that. What do I need to do for myself so that I don't recreate the situation in the future? That's what you can hope for. But you don't leave because you expect that. You leave because you need to take care of yourself. So, um, how do you deal with long distant narcissists? <laughs> I think somebody will probably know what my answer is. You block and delete them. You don't deal with them at all. Why would you? What are you? Well, then, okay, so then the question goes back to, well, what are you getting out of it? Are you getting out of? And there, and it's not a judgment. It's just you have to you have to be honest with yourself. For me, it would probably be something like, well. I like the fact that he texts me. I like the fact that he calls me. I like being important to someone. But then if it's a narcissist, it's not real. And everything they do is a lie designed to get their own needs met and not in a healthy way. They're getting trying to get the needs met of an insatiable three-year-old. And they'll do whatever they need to do. To get it from you from everybody and that's what they do so I don't know if this person is a real narcissist or if they're just someone who's really unhealthy either way is that what you want is that what you want in your life do you want to take that time and energy out of your self your well-being you want to put that on, on some sick individual who's not even in in front of you I that's doesn't sound like it would feel good. I, just, I hope that makes sense. And and again, it's not a fucking fly needs to die. But um, again, I don't know. You know, I'm I'm not a doctor, so I don't know who's a narcissist and who isn't. Hi back, everybody. Um, and again, I don't give a fuck. I it's important for me. To, to validate people who actually have been in relationships with actual narcissists. Because it's, it's, a, it's a very 
specific thing. It's also very important for me to express the fact that it, that's one thing, narcissism is one thing. But if overall, if it doesn't matter if they're a narcissist or not, because if they're manipulating you and they're hurting you, that's what you need to look at. Why? Why are you remaining in the relationship? Why? Or if it's in the past, why did you, why did you allow it? And not, again, not a judgment. It's just like, well, what did, what were you doing? So, and then do you want to do that again? Well, no, we don't like that feeling. So what do I need to change? What I need, what needs do I need to meet of my own? And then you can, and then you do. And again, not easy, but totally possible. Oh, good. I'm glad it does make sense. Does anybody else have any questions? And again, congratulations for my American friends for making it through the holiday. (laughs) It can be hard. For me, holidays aren't like any kind of special day. For me, um, oh my God, my best friend didn't do holidays. And when, so when I lived with him in New York, it just, it just became like, it didn't matter. So I just, it doesn't matter. I have a kid. It matters to him. Other people it matters to them. So cool. You know, let's hang out. Let's do, you know, family stuff or whatever. But I don't, and uh, fam, or, um, when I was a kid, when I was young, holidays did not represent anything awesome. It was very much looking forward to something and then having it be a disaster enough times for me to be very gun shy about hoping for a good holiday anymore. Um, but both of my parents have passed away, so that doesn't happen anymore in, you know, in that way. So, and like, I don't know, I think I'm just different than other people. I don't get more upset and missing people on holidays, probably, you know, just because of that. It's like every day is a holiday. I don't need it to be on a calendar, you know, for me to be like, oh, I want to hang out with my friends or my family. Or like, you know, it's like, I think those are just designed to make money personally. I'm, I'm weird. I don't know. I'm weird. I know. But anyway, any excuse to hang out with your family is awesome, right? So cool. Or whoever, your friend's anniversary, your friend of, what is it? Friendsgiving or, you know, whatever. So, but I know for a lot of people, it's like, well, last year I was with so-and-so at this time and, uh, or, you know, mom's gone now and I can't, you know, whatever. So a lot of people have really wonderful memories and make wonderful memories on, on holidays. So that's awesome too. Any questions? Um, that's, that's all, that's all I have in my notes. Um, So I have, what do I have? I have the website, grayrock.online. That has some resources on there. Uh, I have the two different separate ones. One's a list of videos and books and people, internet type, you know, connection, connection stuff. And then I have another one that's um, just, you know, just different mental health resources yeah, again, more, you know, online stuff, but it might like have home phone numbers or, you know, places and, and things. I still would love to have a really big list of great therapists, but I don't know that there are that many great therapists because it's weird. Like I said, you know, all we can use is these words and I just don't think we've even touched the surface of the reality of mental, like how our brains fucking work and the whole, the whole picture. But, you know, we do what we can with what we have. So now I've got more people here. Does anybody know? No questions? Again, there's like 5 million on my, um, on my, in my inbox. Oh, you know what I could talk about? I don't know how much longer I have on here, but, um, I could talk about that fucking thing that happened this week. And I'm still not clear on it, but I, I did learn some stuff that I didn't really want to learn through experience. But okay, so this guy, um, I don't even know, but he's got a lot of followers. I don't know, probably like a million or something. I don't even remember. I don't care. But he posted a picture of himself with the words on his shirt. Something like, I am a victim of narcissism. 
So of course I'm like, oh, because the stuff he posts has nothing to do with that. So that was like, oh, what the, what is this? So I, I read it. And if I read it correctly, he was claiming to be a victim of narcissism because he is um, a recovered narcissist. So let that sink in. Okay, well, if you're a victim of narcissism, what, a, what would you call the people that you abused, first of all? Second of all, at first I'm like, oh, well, he just misunderstood. He just like heard the term and applied it to himself because his Instagram is about basically about selfies. So I'm like, oh, well, he, he doesn't know. And then all his followers started jumping in my shit. And I was like, hmm. It was because I kept saying, well, narcissists don't get cured. That's not how that works. I would love it if they did, but that's not how it works. It, they don't because they don't care to get help. If, if someone cares to get help, they're not a narcissist. In my belief, that's what I believe. Um, that's what the science has proved. And in my experience, you know, I went to therapy with mine, two different therapists. And I, um, what was the other thing? Oh, went to meetings, different types of meetings. I mean, he came to Makota with me. He went to NA and it was all fake. It was all fakery. So in my opinion, you're either a narcissist or you're not. If you want help, you're not a narcissist because narcissists, what they do works for them and they don't change. All the science says they do not change. They die, they get worse as they age. And again, Sam Vaknin claims to have come up with a procedure that does help them. And he says that when anybody reaches rock bottom, they reach out for help. That's what he says. I don't know. I would love to see it. I would love to see what he does with someone, his nar self-aware narcissist. I would love to see what he does with someone I would love to see a narcissist who says, yeah, I have a problem. I want to fix it. I would love to see that. And then I would love to see the procedure that helped him get to the other side of it or her. But until I see, oh shit. I don't know if it's still recording. But anyway, until I see that, I'm going to function with what I have learned so far. So yeah, he's claiming to be um, <laughs> some kind of cured narcissist. And it was upsetting because I don't want people thinking that that's real. So I continued, you know, back and forth with some of the people and just realized, oh, they think like, I don't, number one, they think I don't know what I'm talking about. And number two, they want to attack me because they're defending this guy. And number three, I don't remember what number one was, but they, they literally did not know what they were talking about. They had no, they had, they just wanted to attack me. And I just kept trying to, you know, explain. And I knew I was being codependent. I'm like, I'm trying to change these people's minds. I'm trying to convince them of something they don't want to know. They, they don't, they're just talking out of their ass. And so and then I'm like, Fuck. but it's really hard for me to do that. Just to stop when there's mistruth. And, and or injustice, I, it's really hard for me just to leave that alone. So, you know, I engaged for a while, um, you know, every once in a while until I realized, and this one girl, oh my God, anyway, you can't ever say no narcissist has ever changed. I'm like, I don't, it's not my fucking science. I'm just telling you what, you know, what I've learned throughout the history of the entire human race. Has there ever been one narcissist who changed? Probably. I don't fucking know, uh, but what I understand is they are, sorry, I'm getting all riled up. They are emotional infants, and if they were to face one thing, they would have to face all of it, and they would have to experience the emotions that they've been bottling up since they were toddlers. I don't think anyone could endure that. That's what I understand about it, so that's what makes sense to me. So some motherfucker comes online with a shirt saying, you know, I'm a victim of narcissistic, I'm what, well, I'm a victim of narcissism. Bitch, please. No, you either are or you're not. And these people, I got to the point at the end 
where I, you know, I was just like, well, you know, come back to me in a couple of years. Okay, that's fine. You don't believe me. You think whatever, like I want this to be true or whatever. Okay, cool. But we'll see. You know, we'll see. And I was just upset because I'm just like, you know what? You're saying all this shit to people who don't fully understand, but they might be in a manipulative relationship and now they are totally confused. You know, I don't know. It was just really upsetting to me. Grand. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but yeah, they only get worse. That I saw mine and I wasn't even with him for that long. You know, and it's like, it just makes sense. I mean, that's, that's what they, that's how they know how to function. And of course, and it's never going to work. It's never real. So it's, they're going to have to keep, you know, fucking with it and getting more outraged and more unhappy because it's, it's not real. I don't know. So yeah, that was, that was kind of upsetting, but I knew at the same time, I'm like, I'm being codependent right now and that's what I'm doing and I'm going to have to suffer the consequences. And I did, you know, it was emotionally upsetting because it's really important for me to be able to help people. And if someone's spreading misinformation like that, it's very upsetting to me, you know? So I, I you know, I went through it and, and then I was like, you know, I'm done. I wasn't getting anything out of it. I'm like, you know, there's nothing... <laughs> nothing I can say to these people. They're, they're going to keep jumping in my shit. So I was done. And this one girl, she kept, and you know, God bless her, but she kept trying to give me science about, you know, a narcissist who has changed or that they can. I'm like, you know what? These people in this study are not diagnosed narcissists. So that doesn't mean anything. So we went back and forth um, privately and then she finally said, I'm like, oh, of course. She finally said, I don't want to give up on my stepdad or whatever it was because he has this personality disorder and I refuse to believe that da, da, da. I'm like, oh, okay, well, she's, that's, that's where she's coming from. It's not, it's not actually uh, any kind of scientific foundation. It's emotionally, she still wants to believe that a narcissist can get better. Oh, and then I, you know, responded to her about that. And then, of course, she got all pissed off because she, she doesn't want to hear. So, okay, I'll be that one. I'll be that bitch who says stuff you don't want to hear. I'll be that all day fucking long. Uh, I tell you what, and I told them that too. I've had friends, not just one, but several. Because I've always been this person. I've always been this person. I haven't always had these tools. But I've always been this honest person who saw stuff that nobody else wanted to look at. And I've had friends, literally, you understand, I'm going to be 48 next month. 30 years later, after I said something or tried to make them face something, you're right. They have come to me and said, you know what, you're right. I realize you're right What about blah, blah, blah. That's my life. I'm used to that. So that's what I'm telling these people. I'm like, okay, you can attack me now. I'm used to it. And when you, you know, I'll probably still be here in a year or two or five when you see that what I'm saying is correct. So, uh, so I had to take myself out of that environment because I'm like, that's all I'm dealing with right now is people who just want to get in my shit. I know I'm right, but they, they, they don't and they, you know, want to be this kind of way. So, all right. And, and, but it, stop, it still sucks <laughs> when you can't force people to hear the truth and see the truth. So you just got to step out of it like I did. Okay. I think that's it guys for now. Again, happy, whatever, if you're celebrating something. Um, okay. So yeah, got the website. I got the YouTube. It's not real active. It would be kind of cool if it was, but whatever we have this. So that's cool. Um, I have the, the t-shirts and stuff. What else? I think it's just t-shirts on that one. So go check those out. I'm going to come, you know, I've got a million designs and just like not a, all the time in the world to, to work on that. Um, but I want to. So we'll see what I have time for. It's one thing, one last thing. I was talking to my sister today and we hadn't talked in a while. 
and I and I'm hearing myself telling her all these things I'm doing and doing it like fuck I need to chill I need to pick like one or two things and really focus on them because I'm spread thin. okay so the other thing um, you might be concerned about my health issue that I, I posted about um, last week and it's still an issue um, but it might be just fine and it might be life-threatening so We'll see, you know, I'm going to have another test in a week and a half um, and see where that goes. But the surgery, my next surgery is definitely postponed. So I probably will wait until spring. So that's that. Um, yeah, in case you're concerned about that, that's that. That's it. If you have any questions, let me know. Um, do you have any suggestions on things? Oh, yeah, that I was asking for suggestions on... Um, what is it like self-compassion and self-love like how to retrain myself into that I was listening to some Louise Hay I don't I mean I know she's right and I get it but it's it's not quite right for me so I'm gonna go back over that that list that you guys gave me if anybody has any others you know DM me if if something that has helped you a lot like you know because that's that's the thing bottom bottom line end of the day we got to learn how to love ourselves and once we do that we're not gonna be attracted to assholes or manipulative people in any way and we'll be able to set boundaries and it won't be an issue that's what I think makes sense to me I don't know how to necessarily get there but I have a lot of, a lot of really good tools so I'm gonna do that so anyway peace out you guys have a great night and I'll talk to you next time I do need to do a giveaway I know what I want to give away I do so let me think about it and see if like, I know I want you guys to have, but I don't know if that's something that anybody cares about, but I'll work on that. So I'll check back in as soon as I can. I have some free time this weekend. So peace. Bye, guys.